Welcome to Greenshine Farmer's video blog about a family starting a farm and going back to the homestead lifestyle. Hey guys, welcome to Greenshine Farmers. Today we're going to do an episode on on hemp and how that can fit into a diversified vegetable operation. So this is our first year growing hemp and uh, you can see the plants here. These are some of our plants. We're growing everything under high tunnels and <clears throat> we've got maybe seven or eight different varieties. We didn't really mean for it to happen that way but it just sort of did. So we're going to go through the different varieties, look at some of the differences, look at some of the nuances of this plant and just kind of see how you know growing hemp for CBD flour can fit into a diversified vegetable operation. Okay now this tunnel was the first one we planted and you can see these plants are just monsters. I mean we put these out I think in early June and I was thinking oh maybe we've done it too late but these plants just grow so incredibly fast and get so big that we honestly planted a little too early. Next year we'll probably wait till mid-June before planting. And, um, and you can see they're, they're really doing great. They're absolutely rocking. They're in about the second or third week of flower. So you can see them just starting to form their buds here. And so what's going to happen, the kind of life cycle of this plant, of just a cannabis plant in general, is it's going to put out a lot of leaf matter and then once the days start to get typically around 12 hours, maybe 12 and a half, they start to go into flower and then they're going to shoot. And so this is what's happened here. You can see kind of how each branch has just really shot up and then they start really forming their buds on each individual. So, you know, that'll be a, a cola, that'll be a cola. Um, there's a bit of techniques you can do to increase your yield, things like topping. Um, you can see here we've got some trellis wire here. And this is just so we can actually take these branches and sort of spread them out. You can kind of train them that way. And ideally, we would use this trellis setting to get kind of a nice even canopy. But since these are from seed, they're all different shapes, all different sizes. They're really all different plants. Um, if we were growing from clones, uh, we would have a lot more consistency. But um, with seeds, you get a very uh, rigorous taproot. And um, I, I've been happy. These plants look incredibly, incredibly happy. Um, I mean, and you can just see how it's getting a little tight in here. So we've taken the end walls off. We've put the sides way up. I mean, honestly, you know, these tunnels are about, I don't know, maybe 14 feet at, uh, at the center there, and they're just about touching. You can see over here, you know, these are getting very close to touching the plastic, which is, which is not good. So one thing that we've done is we've actually bent them. I don't know if you can see that there, but that one's kind of bent, and the vesicles can still travel, can still get nutrients, and it's still getting light. So what it's doing is it's now just gonna send up these bud shoots. And you see these plants are quite a bit smaller. They're they're a nice size though, and you can notice the difference in the structure of these plants. You know, you can see here they're 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 a lot more they're a lot more upright. Those down there are cherry cobbler, and they really got big, and then they shot up. These kind of stayed more stout. This is a variety called KLR1, and they're just a lot more manageable. So they're kind of growing more upright. You can see them kind of shooting, and um, nonetheless, though, I think this is going to be a good. A good yielder. Here's another variety down here. Now these are actually the only clones we set out and this is a variety called T1 and they're much much smaller. Um, you know these T1s I got as cuttings at the same time I started these and so um, you know they just seem to gr uh, grow a bit slower but they are really starting to put on some nice flower. I don't know how much we're gonna get off of these. Um, but uh, you know they seem to be flowering out nice, so so you know time will tell. Okay, now here is yet another variety. This one is called Auto Stout, and it is like its name. It's a stoutier variety. So you can see it's it's kind of shooting more 
it's more short and squat and it's shooting more lateral branches um, which you know for our tunnel space is actually a good thing so depending on your context you might want a plant that it stays more short and stout or one that gets really tall and bushy um, they, it's amazing how these plants really differ from uh, variety to variety and you can see we've just kind of got them you know we've got our lettuce here and we've just basically planted our our hemp plants down the center of of all of our tunnels okay here we are in the nursery and we've got an auto flower variety here in little four inch pots and then as we go and these are all feminized or at least they should be and then we've got these auto flowers in two gallon pots now the reason for that is these are going to take longer to show. Now some of them, now I realize with autoflowers, if they just get the least bit stress, they go to flower like really early. I, I, you can see I have some empty pots here because I noticed we already had some males um, starting to show their sacks. <laughs> so I pulled them out and got rid of them. Um, <clears throat> So this is interesting. This, the auto flowers are, are very intriguing because this presents an opportunity to essentially get two cycles without having to use light deprivation. So a little bit on auto flowers. With the cannabis family, you've got three main groups. You've got cannabis indica, cannabis sativa, and cannabis rudialis. The rudialis um, <clears throat> was essentially discovered growing in a ditch out in Russia somewhere and they found that it will go to flower regardless of the day length. So those seeds right there are going to go from seed to harvest in 90 days regardless of what the sun is doing. Which like I said is very cool. They're going to be smaller plants, they're going to be a bit more stout and they've got a much shorter life cycle which is interesting for several reasons. For one, we could essentially plant out in April and be harvesting in July, replant in July, and get another harvest in October. So okay, now the question becomes, what are you going to do with it when it's ready to harvest? So when it's ready to harvest, we're going to be cutting the plants, we're going to be bringing them up to a, a location, and we're going to be breaking them down into single branches that we can then hang. And my big project for this month, in fact, Alex is taking the kids, going up to Chicago, and my job is to convert this whole cabin here into a dry room. So you can see we've got the shelves cleared. All these shelves were filled with stuff. Alex has been busy getting it all organized and put into boxes. And we're essentially going to insulate it and uh, run wire across it so we can hang. This is a pretty big room. It's got 10 foot ceilings. We're going to put uh, fans in each corner and at the bottom of each corner and um, run probably two dehumidifiers. And I think this is going to be a fantastic uh, room for drying and curing. Uh, so we'll keep you posted on that. Anyway, that just about wraps it up. Um, this was kind of just going to be a brief overview video of what we've been up to and kind of just, you know, some of the nuances of growing hemp. We're going to definitely do more videos on on, on growing hemp and, and, and whatnot, but I think we're going to do those through a separate channel. So essentially what we're doing is Greenshine Farms is staying vegetables and our value added brand is Akira Botanicals and that's going to be basically dealing with CBD products. Um, so that is kind of a chance for us to sell to people outside of just the Asheville region. We've had a lot of people interested in CBD oil, friends, family members. It's kind of just been spreading word of mouth. So we actually are just finishing up our website now. Go check it out. It's akirabotanicals.com and uh, we're also going to be putting out more content that's kind of just centered around you know hemp and, and CBD and that sort of thing. So uh, stay tuned for that um, and uh, yeah thank you guys for watching. See y'all next time. If you guys like this video and you'd like to see more like it, leave us a comment down below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also, visit us at greenshinefarms.com and follow us on Instagram at greenshinefarms. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.